Hi, my name is Sean and I'm an engineer here with Maxim Integrated. In this video, we'll learn how to configure Stealth Chop on the TMCL 5130 eval kit using the TMCL IDE. Stealth Chop is a type of chopper mode developed by Trinamic that allows completely silent operation of stepper motors compared to more traditional chopper modes at low speeds. Stealth Chop applications have achieved noise levels of 10 dB and more below classical current control. Based on the current feedback, the IC regulates voltage modulation to minimize current fluctuation. We will now look at what it takes to configure Stealth Chop using register values, and then we'll go to the TMCL IDE and do a demonstration. On this slide, the flowchart on the left serves as a quick start guide to help first time configuration of the IC. It does not cover all advanced functionalities, but concentrates on the basic function set to make a motor run smoothly. Assuming the basic parameters are now set, we can look at the Stealth Chop flowchart to identify which registers we need to modify to get Stealth Chop to work. As you can see, there are three registers that need to be modified General Config, PWM Config, and Chopper Config. Note that at the end of the Stealth Chop flowchart, there is an option to switch to Spread Cycle from Stealth Chop at a certain velocity threshold. Spread Cycle is a cycle by cycle chopper mode which offers smooth operation at higher velocities but is not as silent or smooth as Stealth Chop at lower velocities. The need for switching to Spread Cycle at higher velocities is application and motor specific, which is beyond the scope of this video. As previously stated, there are three registers associated with Stealth Chop. They are General Config, PWM Config, and Chopper Config. I will now go over these three registers and describe which bits should be changed to get Stealth Chop working at a basic level. Starting with General Config, there is just a single bit in this register that needs to be modified. This bit is called Enable PWM Mode and should be set to 1 to enable Stealth Chop. The PWM config register has six different parameters to control how Stealth Chop behaves, but we are only interested in four for now. PWM auto scale enables automatic current scaling using current measurement if set to 1, or uses feed forward velocity controlled mode if set to 0. The feed forward velocity controlled mode will not react to a change of the supply voltage or to events like a motor stall, but it provides very stable voltage amplitudes and does not require any current measurement. This can be useful for a known supply voltage and known motor characteristics, but for evaluation we will stick to the automatic mode using current feedback. PWM frequency 1 and PWM frequency 0 are two bits that determine the voltage mode PWM frequency, derived from the part's clock frequency. If both bits were set to zero, then the PWM frequency would be equal to the clock frequency divided by 512. This table shows the available PWM frequency choices for a few common clock frequencies, with recommended values marked in green. PWM frequencies in the 30 kHz to 50 kHz range typically give a good balance between low current ripple and higher velocity performance versus static power dissipation. Assuming the clock frequency is set to 8 MHz, we will set PWM frequency 1 to 1 and PWM frequency 0 to 0 in order to get a PWM frequency of about 31.2 kHz for our tests. PWM grad is made up of 8 bits which are used to set a user-defined amplitude gradient, depending on the value of PWM auto scale. If PWM auto scale is 0, then the 8 bits are used to set a value between 0 and 255 for velocity-based scaling. If PWM auto scale is 1, like in our setup, then these bits are used to set a value between 1 and 15, which defines the maximum PWM amplitude change per half wave. This value should be as low as possible to provide soft and stable operation behavior, 
but needs to be large enough to allow the driver to react quickly if the target motor current, supply voltage, or motor velocity changes rapidly. Probing the motor current in one coil shows the effects of PWM grad. On the left you can see an example of a good PWM grad value, and on the right you can see an example where the PWM grad is too small. For now, a value of 1 is sufficient. PWM amplitude is made up of 8 bits which are used to set a user-defined PWM amplitude offset in the range of 0 to 255, provided that PWM auto scale is equal to 0. If PWM auto scale is equal to 1, then these 8 bits set a user-defined maximum PWM amplitude when switching back from current chopper mode to voltage PWM mode. This is useful to avoid any jerk in the motion when switching from spread cycle to stealth chop. As PWM auto scale is set to 1, we will set the PWM amplitude to 255 for now. With stealth chop enabled and the PWM config register values determined, we will now take a look at the chopper config register. This register has a lot more parameters than the other two, but we are only interested in a small portion of these parameters for a basic setup. Here are the locations of TBL1 and TBL0 in the chopper config register. These two bits set the duration of the blanking time on the current comparator, so ringing noise on the sense resistor is ignored. A value of 1 or 2 is suitable for typical applications, which corresponds to 24 or 36 clock cycles, respectively. With that sorted, let's go over to the TMCL IDE and configure the TMC5130 with the information we now know from these slides. Here is the main window of the TMCL IDE, and this is what you'll see when you first launch it. Connect the TMC5130 eval kit to a 24 volt power source, and then plug the USB cable into the eval kit and the computer you are using. A connection is established automatically, and you can see the voltage supplied to the TMC5130 on the upper left side of the screen. In the main window, you can see a list of registers. This is the register browser and allows you to read and modify all applicable registers. If we click on general config, for example, we can select individual parameters within this register, such as enable PWM mode to read about its function and to toggle its value. While we could use this method to set the appropriate register values to the value shown in the presentation, there is an easier option. Simply click on Chopper Settings under the Motor 1 drop-down on the left side of the window, and this will open up a new window. Click on the Stealth Chop tab on this window, and click the box if Stealth Chop is not already enabled. There are default values in these fields, which you can either accept or replace with your own values. I will replace the PWM amplitude value of 200 with 255. Note how the input field turns yellow when inputting a value. This indicates the value is not set and the enter key must be pressed to submit this value. Once you're content with these settings, click on Store Stealth Chop Settings. Now to test these settings, Click on Velocity Mode under Control Mode on the left drop-down menu. This will open a new window with two dials on it. Set the acceleration to about 1000 and press the play button. Then slowly move the velocity dial with your mouse to whatever speed you wish. At this point, you can reopen the chopper settings window and toggle Stealth Chop on and off from here to compare the differences. Or you can go back to the register browser and toggle bit 2 in the general config register either. Here is a close up of the stepper motor connected to the TMC5130 eval kit.
I will first run the motor without stealth chop enabled. Now with the same speed and acceleration settings, I'll run the motor with stealth chop enabled. Here is a side-by-side -side comparison between stealth chop and no stealth chop. That's it for this video. For more information, check out the links in the bio below. If you'd like to know more about Maxim Integrated, check us out at maximintegrated.com.